Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today we have got lots of news and also some updates from different cruise ships. And I also wanted to let you know that this morning my husband and I did our COVID tests and we both tested negative. So everything is looking good for us to get to go on our cruise the day after tomorrow. If you're brand new here, we are going on Sunday on the Caribbean Princess round trip out of Fort Lauderdale. And so we hope you will all come with us. We're going to do a sail away from the different uh, ports that we go to as well as, a, as, well as a sail away out of Fort Lauderdale on Sunday. The time that we are set to depart at this time is 4 p.m. Eastern time. And so we'll look forward to seeing you all then. So I want to welcome all of our Let's Go family members here. Thank you so very much for being with us. And I would like to welcome all of you who are new. We have a lot of new Let's Go family members here. And I just want to thank you so very much for coming. And I really hope that you enjoy being here with us. So first of all, I hate to say this, but today is cancellation day for Princess. This morning I got a message from our Let's Go fam family member Daniel letting us know that yesterday they received word that their California coast cruise had been canceled on the Royal Princess. And so sure enough, um, late this morning, it was later in the morning here, it showed up on the Princess website. And so let me tell you all of the cruises that are canceled, they are all on the Royal Princess. It says, after careful consideration, we must adjust the restart timing of the Royal Princess. Royal Princess will now return to service on May 2nd, 2022 with her published 12 day Alaska cruise. And so these are the cruises that are canceled. There are three of them. First of all, the cl classic California coast 10 day cruise departing on April 8th of 2022. The Northern California coast seven day cruise departing on April 18th of 2022. And finally, the Northern California coast cruise. It's a seven day cruise departing on April 25th of 2022. If you're not familiar, the Royal Princess will be um, home ported there in Vancouver for the Alaska season. And like it says, the first cruise is on May 2nd of 2022. And so there are a couple of options for you if you have those cruises. You can either have a future cruise credit credited to your account that you just need to use by December 31st of 2022. And that, just so you're clear on it, is just for the actual fare portion of your cruise. All of the other things like your port fees and taxes, and if you paid for excursions or or anything else that gets um, credited back to your credit card. And then also, if you don't want a future cruise credit, you can just have your money returned to you, just refunded in the same way that you paid. And if you want that, you need to fill out an online form, which I am sure that everyone has received that is on one of those canceled cruises. You just need to remember to do that by February 14th of 2022, or else you'll just automatically get that future cruise credit. I know that as things have rolled during, um, the pandemic, we had several cruises canceled and every time we just let them put it back as future cruise credit or if they had ones we could reschedule, we've done that. And so that's where we are today. Again, I am really sorry for any of you who have had that cruise, one of those cruises canceled. Um, hopefully you'll be able to get on another cruise that you really enjoy and um, look forward to that. I know I, I feel like half the fun of a cruise is getting to look forward to it and everything that goes with it. And so sorry about that. The next thing that I wanted to talk to you about is I don't want people to just think I only report positive princess news. And so just really quickly yesterday, Princess was in the news. You, um, back in 2017, they got in trouble for dumping some oil, um, in, like some oil contaminated waste. And so they had to pay $40 million. And then in 2019, uh, they got in trouble again and had to pay uh, $20 million that time. And so yesterday they were in trouble again and they have to pay a million dollars this time. And I think one of the things that'll be a little bit different this time, and I really hope helps them because um, it just says that um, under the terms of the agreement, they have to pay the $1 million and establish and maintain the independent internal investigative office known as the Incident Analysis Group. And so I hope this really helps them. I don't know um, whose fault this is or exactly what happened, but I wish Princess well in getting this taken care of. Um, 
61 million dollars is a lot to spend on things like that so like i said i wish them well in getting this uh, taken care of so that it doesn't happen again um, the next thing that i wanted to let you know about is hawaii now yesterday in my um, report about hawaii and boosters i don't think i did a good job I know I didn't do a good job, so please forgive me. So I had watched a news conference where the governor of Hawaii, he let you spell his last name, I-G-E, I don't know how to pronounce that. Anyway, he was answering questions, and one of the questions had been about requiring boosters. And so I looked and um, looked back at everything that I found about that, and let me tell you what he said. It says, um, Governor David IGE confirmed a booster shot will be necessary to be considered fully vaccinated and skip traveler quarantine. So under current rules, arriving travelers from out of state only need two doses or a negative COVID test to um, avoid ice, you know, quarantine when they get there. It says an increasing number of government agencies are requiring a booster be to be considered fully vaccinated, even though it has not been required by the CDC. It says he also went on to say, quote, we know that the community needs time to react to that. So we would have to provide at least two weeks for those who might who may not be able, sorry, for those who may not be up to date to have the opportunity to go and get vaccinated if they need to. And so we will keep an eye on that Safe Travels Hawaii website and I will put a link under this video to a couple of stories. Thank you to our Let's Go family member Fred who asked me about it and made me look back at it again. Thank you. I'm following a little bit behind on replying to everyone's comments, but I read them all and I'm trying to do my best here to get back to each one of you and I will get back to you. I am um, working on it. And so anyway, thanks Fred. And so that is just a, um, um, and it's not an update. It's kind of a clarification on that rule. When I had originally seen his press conference, I thought that it was coming immediately. And so I like that this updates us for sure. Everyone will have two weeks notice. Now I will point out, now I clearly don't have a crystal ball here. If I did, I'd have a lot more news. But um, a lot of you, um, a couple in the comments and a couple in emails and just over the course of all of this happening with cruise ships going back to Hawaii, have commented, do you need to get a booster to go to Hawaii? Hawaii. Now we know that Princess, Holland America, and Carnival have all sent out notices to their passengers who have a cruise booked to Hawaii, so letting them know that they have to sign up with the Safe Travels program and that they recommend that you get a booster if you're eligible. And so I, I know that cruise lines don't go around making protocols and suggestions like that unless they are well founded. And so take that as you will. Uh, we'll just keep looking for more updates on Hawaii, but that's where we stand today. And so um, there we are on that one. And I also wanted to let you know that um, we have several updates regarding the CDC, as you have seen, and I've been waiting for a while to comment until we have all of the news on um, tomorrow. Today is the 14th and yesterday I messed up the date on my video, so I apologize. This is January 14th. Tomorrow is the 15th and that is the day that the conditional sale order is going to expire with the CDC. As you know, maybe you don't know, but they met with the Senate this week for some hearings and they said that they are not going to extend that conditional sale order and on the 15th, the day it expires, they will announce some more information to go along with that. And so I'm going to really be watching for that information tomorrow. And I also want to say that they said that it's going to be voluntary for the cruise lines to participate with what they want to do. So we will just keep an eye out and see how, how all of that unfolds. I would, I just am going to add my opinion that I don't think we are suddenly going to see the cruise lines not requiring anything that has been on their protocols at this point. I think that we're going to see things stay largely the same. And so I will keep you up to date and as soon as we've got that information, I'll share it with you. The next thing I want to let you know now is about updates that we have got from different members of our Let's Go family. 
Now, I hope that a lot of you read the comments because there's a lot of information there and I try to weigh what is really important for everyone and what everybody can just catch in the comments. And so the first thing that I want to let you know is about the ordering of those tests that we order when we want to do a COVID test at home and have a healthcare professional on the other end, like in a video call. That's what we did this morning and it went really easy. My husband did video doing it on the cell phone and then after he did it, I did mine on the cell phone and it was really easy. The way they move between cameras, it's really easy to tell which camera you're supposed to be using um, to get, excuse me, to get the information they want at a certain time. So anyway, when you order these, we ordered ours from Princess through Optum make sure that you order extras. Now our Let's Go family member Rod, he said that they ordered six and that two of them were dry, so they were not usable. And then today when I was getting all of ours out of the box, I bought six and so um, I, this one was the one I grabbed for me to use, but as you'll see, they always have to scan the, um, there's always a sticker here usually that has a QR code that they scan and it also tells the expiration date of the test. And this one doesn't have it. And so this would not work to be used with one of those video phone calls. So I'm going to hang on to it and just use it when I want a COVID test, but I don't need to have official results for anything. I just wanna see if I've got COVID or not. So that's what I'm gonna do. But, um, and it taught me that right when they come in the mail from now on, I'm gonna go through all six in the box or however many I order and make sure that they've all got the sticker because I ordered these um, in December like in early December and um, I would have like called them and told them they owed me another one but um, I'm not going to worry about it now and so like I said Rod said they had two that were no good. Another thing I want to let you know is we had a Let's Go family member named Jerry and he had got tested through that NAMI health that I told you about at the Fort Lauderdale airport and he just wanted me to share a heads up and I think this is valuable no matter where you get tested. He had gotten a PCR test and it showed positive there and he was feeling perfectly fine, which we know we can do um, if we're vaccinated and especially if we're boosted with um, the Omicron variant, but he felt that he should get tested again and he had two more tests done that were both negative. And so he had gotten a false positive on that. So if you get a positive test and you feel like you should be retested, I would say do that. Not only if you get tested there, but anywhere else because um, you know false positives can crop up in testing anywhere. So just kind of take that as a reminder. Another really important update that I want to let you know about is our Let's Go family member, Tracy. She just had the experience of being on the Regal Princess and her husband tested negative, I'm sorry, positive, <laughs> positive on the testing day between two cruises. So they had to quarantine. And she wanted me to make sure that you know that there is a really good benefit. I know that I did those two videos about Princess Easy Air, so I'm gonna link those below. But she said she found another really good benefit of using Princess Easy Air. She said that, um, she says if they had not been booked direct with Princess Easy Air, it would have been at least $500 more for them to change their flights and travel home. She says, um, it said the bigger advantage is that because we booked our air through Princess, they took care of all the arrangements to get us rebooked since they had to go in quarantine. They had to do absolutely nothing except show up at the airport when it was time for them to be able to fly home. There was someone in their group that had booked their own flight, but unfortunately had to quarantine and they had to do everything themselves and they had to pay over a thousand dollars to book a new flight and there was no refund on their original flight. And so as you're booking your travel right now, um, like I said, I don't work for Princess at all, but you might just want to take that into consideration when you're looking at your flights. There are lots of reasons to book with Princess. There are reasons, you know, sometimes you want to use miles or um, a gift card or something to pay for your flight. But you might want to consider right now, while we've got so much going on with travel, 
to book with Princess in case you have to quarantine or just in case your flight gets canceled and you're scrambling trying to get another flight, they'll help you. And you won't have to pay those big um, differences in the ticket if you have to make a change. And so Tracy, thank you so much for letting us know this. Incidentally, this trip that we have um, that we're leaving tomorrow to go to Fort Lauderdale, we did book our tickets through Princess Easy Air. We just did it because it was easy and they were actually cheaper than the tickets that we could get just going directly um, and booking them ourselves. So that's why we did it this time. So um, I wanted to let you know about that. Also, um, on the Caribbean Princess, oh, whoops, let me turn the page here, I apologize. Um, let's go um, over to the Enchanted Princess first. We have two awesome members of the Let's Go family on the Enchanted Princess right now. First of all, Dave sent me a message last night and you can send us an email or comment or if you want to, you can send us a message um, through our Let's Go Travel Tips um, Facebook group through the uh, Facebook Messenger there and I'll get it. He said that last night on the Enchanted Princess they got message that they had to shut down all of the shows. It said that some of the crew members had tested um, had tested um, negative so far but they were in isolation because they had symptoms and so it sounds like the shows on the Enchanted Princess are done till the end of this cruise. Also, Paul, our other Let's Go family member, he let us know that yesterday they had a sail away from Curacao. Am I saying that right? And um, like it would have been yesterday from yesterday. So it was probably on Wednesday that they had a sail away, sail away party from Curacao and that they were um, having a sea day today, I think it would be for Friday. Um, instead of going into Grenada. And so he didn't have any details, um, but I'm sure it's probably because Grenada didn't want to let them come into port right now. And so those are just updates from the Enchanted Princess. From the Regal Princess, we have an update from Lori. Thank you, Lori. So she is on the Regal Princess right now. She says there are 1,480 passengers. They are allowing six passengers in an elevator at a time, and we've heard that before. She says they are cleaning like crazy, just keeping her sparkling clean. They have um, been able to call at all three ports. They're Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao, but vaccine cards are needed, is what she said. And so I'm just making copies of our vaccine cards so that I can leave our originals with our passport in the safe. But I am... Um, Maybe we should be taking our passports with us. Well, I'm making a copy of our vaccine card to take into port with us so that we can show that if anybody needs. And um, they are having still two main shows a night. And um, she said that the buffet um, options are not quite as extensive as she remembers them being in the past, but they're still really good. And so that's what she shared about the Regal Princess right now. Um, the Grand Princess, Roxanne was on the Grand Princess in December, and so you will recall that is before she was sailing to Hawaii. But I just wanted to let you know that Roxanne said they did have a package of masks in their room when they em embarked, and she said now they call it sip and cover. That's what you're supposed to do if you're sipping your drink. You're supposed to have a sip of your drink and put your mask on again. So I appreciated that. And then um, she said that they had such a nice time in December that they are going to be sailing later this month on the Sky Princess. And so um, interestingly enough, the Grand Princess right now with being in Hawaii, you probably saw in the news yesterday that while the Grand Princess was docked in Maui, they were not able to serve any alcoholic beverages due to requirements placed on them by the port of Maui. And so I don't know if that has always been a thing there in Maui or if it's a new thing. I don't know if it's just a COVID thing. So any of you that have sailed to Hawaii before, if you can comment, that might be a really interesting point that we would all like to know. The next ship here that I've got another update just as of yesterday or early this morning is the Majestic Princess. Thank you, Cheryl. She says they're still going great. They've been able to hit all three ports and um, they've had wonderful food and the shows are growing great, going great. And so that's really good. They've not had to cancel any shows there. 
And then we've got the Ruby Princess. We've got Code 4 for Life. Um, they are, have been a member of our Let's Go family from clear in the beginning. So we really appreciate your support. But they're having a great cruise. They have really been enjoying the Ruby Princess. And I wanted to let you know. Um, I can't remember if I've told you, but they have their own channel and they have been putting up some little short videos showing the buffet and dining and just lots of different things like they showed when they got on the Ruby Princess. And so if you want up to date videos on that ship, you might want to take a look at their channel. Also, Karen. Thank you, Karen. She's another Let's Go family member. She is on the Ruby Princess right now as well. She says they have made all of their ports and Thursday morning they had an announcement from the captain that they had to make an unexpected stop in Cabo to let off a crew member who was needing medical attention there, but they made a point to say that it is not related to COVID. And so I'm glad that they were able to take good care of the crew member. The last update that we have got is um, um, from the Caribbean Princess, and they are putting those masks in your room as well. So I appreciate Rod letting us know that. And um, one last thing, um, Verna, a Let's Go family member, shared that she had been on like a back-to-back -back cruise. I think the first one was on Carnival, and then she was in a hurry to get over to the one on Princess, and she didn't have the opportunity to be tested. So she did the thing where you show up to the port and say, I don't have, a, um, haven't had a chance to do COVID test. And um, she said that they tested her and went really smoothly. It didn't take a long time. And she was on the ship in no time. And so I just wanted to let you know that if you have to use that option, it seems to be working really smoothly. And so thank you very much, Verna, for letting us know about that. Thank you everybody for sticking with, with me through this video. I know they've been a little bit longer the last few days, but we have just had so much to cover and I hope that you find it really valuable. We will um, let you know how we're doing tomorrow. We're planning when we get to Fort Lauderdale to get our video up and sh just show you um, getting to Fort Lauderdale as well as getting to the hotel so that you can see where we're staying and we'll let you know what we think of it and do a, um, do a review of that hotel as well so that you have an idea if you're looking for somewhere to stay. So thank you very much. If you appreciate this video, will you please give it a thumbs up? I really appreciate your support. I will be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>